G'day folks, uh, welcome to a Monday afternoon and I just thought that I would show you some of the pneumatics that I got. I figured it'd be worth getting one of these semi-rotary drives and a big big cylinder. Very handy. Um, yeah, The reason my name's written on it is Scrapyard Rule. If you want it, write your name on it and put it aside. Uh, only reason I did that was because it still had to be weighed up in bulk with the rest of the stuff. I think the total came to about 9 or 10 tonnes worth of machinery. The guy who sold all that stuff would have made a bit of a, a fair dollar out of it. Mind you, he probably paid a bit at auction. It was all bought from a big Grays auction and just hoarded. The guy who had it was a bit of a experimental nutter like me. He had some grand plan for it and it never worked out. So I buy a minimal amount of it myself and put it to use. I'm still going to get that stainless steel cabinet which had the PLC and everything in that. I'll pick that up probably tomorrow or something. The thing weighs 300 kilos. Well, almost I don't know, 550 pounds or so. So it's reasonably heavy. The, top, the whole top panel of it is half inch or almost three quarter inch stainless steel plate with racks and racks of cylinders and actuators and other stuff for filling cosmetics canisters or aerosols or something like that. But either way, I've got one of these adjustable uh, semi-rotary drive, pneumatic drive. Um, I looked up the part number online and the, close, the only website I found with a price on it was in Europe. And it was 2,200 euros for one of these. So they are not a cheap item. The best part is there's another one in the stillage as well. And this one feels alright. Sorry, this one feels all right. The other one's seized. So, don't know. But I want to make a little hammer swinger. I'm going to call it the Where's My Hammer Machine after photonic induction. <laughs> I'm going to turn these brackets around, bolt it to the table, and make up a holder to weld onto this sleeve that can hold a sledgehammer. Yeah, you know where this is going. <laughs> And then after that I'll just use an old hydraulic valve block to control the flow of air forwards and reverse. Or raise and lower the hammer. And then you just put things like televisions and other stuff underneath it and see what it can do. Same with that ram there. I've got the mounting plate for it down there. There's a brand new mounting plate that was still in its wrapping. And um, it's got a reasonable amount of stroke on it. Yeah. A lot of water. <laughs> Diabolical noises. Not a lot of stroke, but just the volume in that cylinder will be enough to squish pretty much anything. So yeah, we're going to have, to have a bit of fun with that. Don't know what the model is on the cylinder, that's all illegible. I think they were custom made for a specific application. And the cylinder itself is brass, so that's not going to be eaten out. Only thing I'm concerned about is the seals. Same with this, if this has had water in it, then it might be a bit of a problem, but it doesn't look like it. Those ends are cast alley or cast iron or something. I think it might be cast iron. Yeah, solid machinery. Not quite sure what this would be used for, but it would be for actuating or moving something in a process. Maybe moving a platen up and down or something like that. Who knows? But it's got a buffer zone in it on each end, so you want it to exert maximum force on the middle of the swing then come to a gradual halt um, it's not it's not as rapid as a cylinder because you can just open up the um, restrictors on these things and they can be lightning quick these are internally restricted and only move at a set speed slightly adjustable if you adjust your end limits and things you can uh, increase it a bit but yeah that's all dependent on how far your limits are and that's what these screws adjust. Your stops. Right now it's just past 45 degrees either way. Uh, they can go 360 degrees maximum. So they're quite universal. But it's just heavy. This thing weighs 80 pounds on its own. 40 something kilos. And so does the cylinder. They both weigh about 80 pounds each. They're not light. Uh, either way. Just bit sit, setting up a little test chamber for some implosions. I want to do the second part of the vacuum experiments and get that over and done with. Got some old oil drums, fuel can, 
oil bottle. These would be interesting. No more 44 gallon drums. My neighbours didn't appreciate that. Apparently I rattled quite a few people and even knocked a bottle of shampoo off someone's shelf. Yeah, that 44 was impressive. I'm not in any trouble over it, but they just wouldn't like to have it happen again. And I can understand that. That was a lot louder than I was expecting. Like, yeah. These people who ask for me to pop car tyres with overpressurising and things like that do not understand what kind of force that would make. Not to mention the risk of something that weighs as much as this actuator flying off into the neighbourhood. Nah, don't, don't ask silly questions like that. I'm not going to do anything silly like exploding 44 gallon drums or car tyres or LPG tanks, things like that. Not going to happen unless it may be with high pressure water. Water doesn't expand in volume once the pressure's released. So it'll split the casing, but it won't go flying across the backyard through your neighbour's wall. So if anything, it'll be hydrostatic tests. But as for pneumatics and air pressure, if it's confined within something like this, that's all right. And small vacuum experiments, maybe even hook half a dozen of these up together, just punch the valves in and try and crimp a hose onto half a dozen old aerosol cans in a row and see if the compressor can pull them all down at the same time. Could be interesting. Anywho, I'm going to get going, clean up, uh, have, have some dinner. I'm exhausted after today, it's been pretty flat out. Thanks for watching.